The LumaFusion interface is split up into three core areas, the media library, the timeline and the preview. This preview box is an important area as you'll use it to view all the hard work you've been doing in your project. As a result, it's important you know how to navigate it. So let's dive in and take a closer look. When your timeline is selected, which you can do by simply tapping on it, you'll see the project appear in the preview. The image you see directly corresponds to the frame that your playhead is on, this blue vertical line. This will of course change as you play your timeline through with the play icon here, or if you scrub through the project by dragging your finger left and right on the timeline. This is easy to do and is great for working on individual sections, but if you have a very long project, you might like to navigate around your timeline using this horizontal bar, aptly called the Timeline Navigator. This area shows you your project as a whole and allows you to move around your project quickly. You can see it's as if you have a bird's eye view on your timeline from start to finish. Using your finger, you can scrub left and right on the Timeline Navigator to move around your timeline. Watch that as my finger moves up here in the preview, so does the timeline underneath. Up here you're also able to quickly jump to any location on your timeline by tapping on the section you desire. Keeping this in mind, a popular way to use the Timeline Navigator is to move clips around your timeline with ease. So let's say I want to pick up a clip and move it to the end of my timeline. Rather than just pick it up and drag it all the way there, which let's face it, depending on the length of your project could take some time, you can pick up a clip with one finger and use your other hand to tap the desired area on the Timeline Navigator. Now we've jumped to, in this case, the end of the timeline and I'm able to quickly place the clip into its new position. These icons you see at the bottom of the preview are called transport controls and we use these to navigate around the media in our timeline. To play the footage, we hit the play icon here in the center. To pause, we tap the pause icon. Holding the play icon down opens the incremental scrubber where you drag your finger left and right to slowly move through your media. This is useful for finding a particular frame in your timeline or watching your footage back slowly. You'll notice the further you move left or right, the faster the scrubbing, forward to the right and backward to the left. These left and right icons enable you to jump between your clips, transitions and titles on your timeline. You can see that as I tap the jump backwards icon, the timeline will jump to where new clips start and end. This is great for helping you find precise frames in your timeline. Like for example, if I wanted to add a piece of text at the precise moment a clip starts, rather than manually positioning my playhead at the first frame, I could use the jump forwards or jump backwards icon to head straight to the beginning of the clip and add the overlay title here without worrying the text will be a frame or two off. These icons also move between timeline markers, which can be added using the marker icon here. Markers can help you quickly move between particular points in your project. When this marker icon is tapped, a marker will be placed on the current frame your playhead is on. Use the pop-up box here to give it a color and add a note that fits with your project and way of working. So for example, perhaps you want to add a red marker every time there's an area you need to come back to at a later date, or maybe you'll give yourself notes as you go along. These markers will not be seen in the export of your project, so you can add as many as you like to help you navigate around your timeline. As these markers are recognized by the jump forwards and backwards icons, they will also appear on the Timeline Navigator, so you can move between them quickly and efficiently with a simple tap. Once you've finished with a marker, simply tap on it and tap the marker icon with a cross on it to delete. Moving now to the icons either side of the Add Marker button. On the left, you'll see the information icon, which will tell you information about your project if the project is selected. So things like duration, its size and where it's stored. The information icon will also tell you information about an individual clip if that's selected on the timeline or in the media library, which we'll address in another reference guide video. If you're using Media Review and Approval Tools, Dropbox Replay or Frame.io to collaborate with other creators, you'll see the Tools icon here on the preview. To enable this, make sure you're logged into your Teams account up here in the Media Library. 
Tapping on this icon will enable you to make a note or leave a comment on a particular frame of your project timeline, which when exported and shared to the tool can be viewed and replied to by your team. This is a collaborative team solution. So once your team has responded, you'll see their comments on your LumaFusion timeline so you can make any necessary changes. Speaking of changes, we have the undo and redo icons. Tapping them will affect your project change by change, so one action at a time. It's worth noting here that you can undo all the way back until the point the project was last opened or the app was last restarted. And finally, once you've finished your project and need to watch it back before it's sporting, you can double tap the play icon here, which will initiate loop play of your entire timeline. This will play your project on repeat, which is great for reviewing your project multiple times before you export, just in case there are any errors in there that you need to catch. So those are some icons to get your head around when you're working with content that's on your timeline. In the next video, we'll be looking at how we navigate the preview when we're viewing clips, transitions, titles, and music before adding them to our project. Mm -hmm.